Edgar Stevens Beeland was born in Kissimmee, Florida in 1910. His father built the first telephone switchboard there before dying of tuberculosis when Edgar was four. His mother remarried and had two more sons, Bill and James Farmer. He graduated from Kissimmee High School and went to the University of Florida where he hoped to become a doctor. However, one year later, Wall Street crashed and he was forced to leave school and find work to help support his mother who was now divorced. The only opening at the time was at Kissimmee Citrus Growers Association where he started out picking citrus. However, he was a diligent worker and over the next nine years, he learned everything he could under the guidance of the general manager, Harry Plano, working his way up the ladder from picking to production manager and then to Plano's assistant manager. In 1938, at age 28, he was hired as general manager of Clearwater Citrus Growers Association, the youngest general manager in the business at that time. He remained there for 28 years with the exception of three years in the Army during World War II when he was stationed in Panama. He enlisted as a private and quickly acquired the rank of staff sergeant using his managerial skills to organize the packing, loading, and shipping of supplies to wherever they were needed. Prior to enlisting, Edgar had met a beautiful, vivacious 17-year-old girl at the city tennis courts, Maggie May Flowers, who had turned down a tennis career to stay home and help take care of her family. Before he shipped out, he asked her if she was going to wait for him and then gave her a pen and a pack of stationery to make sure she wrote. He got out of the Army in 1945, and she definitely must have written because they were married in August of the following year. Their son Steve was born 11 months later, followed by Dan almost exactly three years after that in 1950. That year was also a highlight for Edgar at Clearwater CGA. He was given the opportunity to furnish the February shipment for Harry and David's Fruit of the Month Club, so he figured out a way to adjust the conveyor belts at the packing house to accommodate their gift boxes, resulting in a business relationship that lasted 16 years. All this was done on a handshake and trust, no contract whatsoever. However, Pinellas County Citrus took a beating between the 1957 and 1962 freezes and a long drought in between, forcing the packing house out of business. Edgar stayed to close down the business, and after 28 years as general manager, his only send-off was the sound of the door as he locked it for the last time. They say that when one door closes, another opens. In Edgar's case, though, two doors opened, which shows how highly respected he was in the industry. He was offered positions with packing houses in both Vero Beach and Winter Haven. He and Maggie met with the Vero Beach entity, and on their way back to Clearwater, she mentioned she had never been to Winter Haven, so Edgar made a detour to drive her around the city. She liked Winter Haven's proximity to Clearwater and all of her friends there, so in 1966, Edgar became the new executive vice president and general manager of Winter Haven Citrus Growers Association, a position he held for 22 years until his retirement in 1984. Edgar was very much a co-op man. He, he, he enjoyed working with his grower members. He enjoyed being a part of the industry. And he, he knew citrus. He ran a good packing house. He knew quality. And he just was a man of, of high integrity and, and high ethical and moral character. And that's the way he ran his business and the way he ran his life. Edgar was a pioneer leader for the fresh fruit packing industry and was instrumental in expanding markets, improving product quality, and creating ways to cut costs through central purchasing as he did with HESCO. In 1977, he was among the initial group of 10 citrus packing houses that banded together to establish the Citrus Self-Insurance Fund, now known as Florida Citrus Business and Industries Fund a group self-insurance fund established to provide access to workers' compensation insurance coverage for Citrus employers. He served as CSIF's first chairman and continued in that capacity for 20 years until he retired in 1997. At the same time, he also served as the fund's administrator from inception of the program in 1977 to 1988. One of the things that I really admired about the industry was they didn't sit around and wait for somebody to come and solve their problem. They banded together and they solved their own problems. And I think that was a hallmark of, of Edgar and many of those that were uh, in his era 
that they, if they saw a problem, even though they might be fierce competitors in the business, they came together, they formed a committee, they addressed it, and they solved it. And that is, to me, a great attribute of not only Edgar Beelan, but also of the citrus industry. He served as a mentor for many industry leaders and was always one to play devil's advocate to make sure that both sides of an issue were properly portrayed before any decisions were made. His knowledge of the industry, his integrity, his cooperative spirit, keen wit, and his mastery of the spoken word enabled him to serve with distinction on many industry boards. Well, having served on a number of boards uh, uh, in the citrus industry through the years with Edgar, I was always impressed with the fact that whatever the issue was, he could ask the questions that uh, sometimes would appear to be negative, but he was wanting to bring out the, both sides of the issue. At the same time, he was a very positive uh, force. He uh, just uh, had the ability to go to the heart of the matter, no matter what the issue was. He was a member of the Seal Sweet Growers Executive Committee from 1971 to 1976 and was a director of both Citrus World and the Highlands Exchange Service Cooperative for nearly two decades. He was an active member of the Florida Citrus Packers Board of Directors and served with distinction on numerous committees, holding various officer positions, including president. In 1991, he was awarded their coveted John T. Leslie Award of Excellence in recognition of his leadership, service, and many contributions to the Florida fresh citrus industry. Throughout it all, his wife Maggie provided unwavering support, encouragement, and a solid foundation as his lifelong love and partner. Edgar uh, worshipped Maggie, and it was, a, it was a very special relationship, and I just enjoyed when I had the opportunity to go by their home and visit with them, and just the, 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 the kind of the, the loving banter between the two of them. You could just see the, the respect that they had for each other and the love that they had for each other, and uh, something that we should all strive for. Edgar Beeland's service to the Florida citrus industry spanned an incredible 70 years throughout a distinguished career that helped advance the Florida citrus industry forward in the production, packing, and processing arenas. An intellectual man and cooperative leader, he was also humble, and many will remember his trademark line of, God bless the common man, there are so many of us. I remember him saying one time in a meeting that uh, said something to the effect, uh, God bless the common man, there are so many of us. And it characterizes him very well. He believed in the common man at the same time he was uh, not the common man. He was very gracious, very brilliant, a voracious reader, and uh, uh, just had a lot to offer. He just uh, was one of those people that really did add to the strength of whatever organization he was involved in. The Florida citrus industry is indeed blessed to have had this common man working on our behalf, and we are both proud and humbled to have known him. Therefore, please join me in honoring his contributions as the 162nd member of the Florida Citrus Hall of Fame. <laughs>